Hey guys, today's video is going to be um, a little bit more serious than usual. Um, I'm sure you've been watching the news and you've been seeing recent events unfolding, um, not just in America but all over the world, but primarily in America as the result of um, a recent death in police custody there. And um, it's definitely put bigotry and racism and hatred in the spotlight. And the community online and within bookstagram and as well everybody's trying to f figure out what they can do to try to help which is not an easy thing to do because there is um there's obviously circumstances where you can't do anything you want to feel like you're doing more than you can basically maybe you're on the other side of the world like me but racism is a problem everywhere and there is something that all of us can do so there is um a whole movement right now going on online and I'm sure you guys have all seen it um, trying to promote um, everything from books and podcasts and movies which educate people about um, the issues that black people face the history behind them the problems with the system that exists today um, to um, there's other ways you can help apart from educating yourself that way that you can also support black authors, black artists, you can um, donate to various different charities, you can um, sign petitions. There is something that you can do from your home if you can't afford to donate. There's actually a video here on YouTube and I'll put a link to it down below where um, all the ad revenue is going to um, the charities that are relevant. So there's a way to donate if you don't have any money just have that video watch it and if you don't have time to watch the whole thing then put it on mute put it beside you let it play um so there is things that we can do and it's definitely made me think about um the way things are and the injustices out there and um my part in them you know because i am obviously a white woman i'm privileged in that sense and um, what I can do to try to help and obviously this video is just the caveat it is not about me trying to be like oh look at me I'm so woke aren't I so helpful that's not the point of this video I'm just trying to um, help in the small way that I can um, I'm not gonna make any money from this my channel's not monetized this is just me trying to do something to promote um, in this case black authors you know, I am primarily a, a book ch channel. I have a bookstagram. Everything I do relates to books and mostly horror books. So I thought a way for me to kind of assist would be to help promote black voices in horror. Tell you guys about some um, books. I've done some research, found some really cool books by black authors. I've bought a bunch of them. I'll put the links to them all below so we can support um, like black members of that particular community. You know there's loads of ways that we can all get involved and we can all help and this is just a tiny way that i thought that that i could <clears throat> so yeah i'm hoping that um you guys will maybe check some of these guys out and give them your support buy their books um i have as i said so i'm just going to let you um launch into the list and see what you think okay so uh first up we have an author called victor laval um there were two books that he's written that i thought sounded fantastic i've ordered one of them we have uh, The Ballad of Black Tom, which is in 1924, Harlem Tommy Tester is a small time hustler whose regular guise is a street musician, brings him in contact with reclusive millionaire Robert Sudom, who wants him to participate in a nefarious scheme involving the great old ones, as in the Lovecraftian type old gods. So I um, immediately was drawn to that because I love H.P. Lovecraft. Um, next, we have The Changeling. Um, which I thought also sounded very cool, which is about when Apollo Cagua was just a child, his father disappeared, leaving him with recurring nightmares and a box labelled Improbabilia. Now a successful book dealer, Cagua has a family of his own after meeting and falling in love with Emma, a librarian. The two marry and have a baby. So far, so happy ever after. However, as the pair settle into their new lives as parents, exhaustion and anxiety start to take their toll. Emma's behaviour becomes increasingly erratic until one day she commits an unthinkable act, setting Apollo on a wild and fantastical quest through a suddenly otherworldly New York in search of a wife and child he no longer recognises. So I thought that sounded cool because it sounded like um, kind of fantastical. Next up, we have Fledgling by Octavia E. Butler. Um, again, she's written more than one horror book, but this is the one that kind of made me intrigued and made me want to read. 
Um, this is the story of an apparently young amnesiac girl whose alarmingly unhuman needs and abilities lead her to startling conclusion. She is in fact a genetically modified 53 year old vampire forced to discover that she can about her stolen former life she must at the same time learn who wanted and still wants to destroy her and those she cares for and how she can save herself anything with vampires to be honest and i'm immediately so old um <laughs> and next up we have white is for witching and i'm not going to pronounce this right i'm so sorry but helen oyemi is how i would pronounce her name apologies if i pronounced that wrong um, this is uh, high on the cliffs near Dover. The Silver family is reeling from the loss of Lily, mother of twins Elliot and Miranda, and beloved wife of Luke. Miranda misses her with particular intensity. Their mazy, capricious house belonged to her mother's ancestors and to Miranda, newly attuned to spirits, newly hungry for chalk. It seems they never left. Forcing apples to grow in winter, revealing and concealing secret floors, the house is fiercely possessive of young Miranda. I like anything involving kind of like haunted properties and houses and old houses, that kind of gothic trope. So that's what drew me with that particular one. Okay, next we have, again, I'm so sorry if I can't pronounce this right, Tananarive Dew. Um, again, lots of books written by her, but the one that I was intrigued with, and you're going to see a theme here, is called The Good House, another kind of haunted housey type trope. Uh, the home that belonged to Angela, Toussaint's late grandmother, is so beloved that townspeople in Sacagawea, Washington, call it The Good House. But that all changes one summer when an unexpected tragedy takes place behind its closed doors and the two sons' family history and future is dramatically transformed. Angela has not returned to the good house since her son Corey died there two years ago, but now Angela is finally ready to return to her hometown and go beyond the grave to unearth the truth about Corey's death. Could it be related to a terrifying entity Angela's grandmother battled seven decades ago? And what about the other senseless calamities that Sacagawea has seen in recent years? Has Angela's grandmother, an African-American woman reputed to have powers, put a curse on the entire family? A thrilling exploration of secrets, lies and divine inspiration. The Good House will haunt readers long after its chilling conclusion. I mean, come on, that sounds amazing. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> excited to read that one. OK, next we have um, author Toni Morrison, who has written multiple books. But again, the one that I was um, intrigued by is called Beloved. Um, it's the mid-1800s and as slavery looks to be coming to an end, Seth is haunted by the violent trauma it wrought on her former enslaved life at Sweet Home, Kentucky. Her dead baby daughter, whose tombstone bears the single word beloved, returns as a spectre to punish her mother, but also to elicit her love. Told with heart-stopping clarity, melding horror and beauty, beloved is Toni Morrison's enduring masterpiece. This one, I know, is going to be a tough read for me. Anything, um, actually, the, you know, the one before as well, anything involving children with children dying, with you know anything happening to kids. As a mum, I always feel that more intensely. So um, I, I, I'm i like, I want to read it. I'm also like, ooh, about it. But that's what horror is all about. It's supposed to push you and to feel those emotions that you wouldn't normally necessarily feel to bring those sort of thoughts to the surface. So um, yeah, I'm excited for that one. Then we have Reni de Pestre, which um, is a book, I love this title, Hadriana in All My Dreams. Um, it is takes place primarily during Carnival in 1938 in a Haitian village of Jacmel. A beautiful young French woman, Hadriana, is about to marry a Haitian boy from a prominent family, but on the morning of the wedding, Hadriana drinks a mysterious potion and collapses at the altar. Transformed into a zombie, her wedding becomes her funeral. She is buried by the town, revived by an evil sorcerer, and then disappears into popular legend. Set against a backdrop of magic and eroticism and recounted with delirious humour, the novel raises universal questions about race and sexuality. The reader comes away enchanted by the marvellous reality of Haitians' voodoo culture and convinced of Depestra's lusty claim that all beings, even the undead ones, have a right to happiness and true love. Again, if you're going to put zombies in a book, I'm going to want to read it. Um, and I love the, the idea of um, voodoo and, and that kind of thing being in it. Um, I'm trying to think if I read a horror book with voodoo in it before. I don't think I have. So um, yes, very intrigued by that. Next we have Skin Folk by Nalo Hopkinson, which is a collection of short story. It has worth, works ranging from science fiction to Caribbean folklore, passionate love to chilling horror. Niall Hawkinson is at her award-winning best, spinning tales like Precious, in which the narrator spews valuable coins and gems from her mouth whenever she attempts to talk or sing. A habit of waste, a self-conscious woman undergoes elective surgery to alter her appearance. Days later, she's shocked to see her former body climbing into a public bus. And the glass bottle trick, the young protagonist ignores her intuition regarding her new husband's superstitions to horrifying consequences. So selection of short story there which sounds um intriguing you guys will see in my channel i love 
um, anthologies and short story collections. I think that, I've said it time and time again, horror is the perfect genre for short stories. It is so impactful in such a small space. Um, so I'm really looking forward to reading all these. Uh, next we have Let's Play White by Chesia Burke. Um, white brings with it dreams of respect, of wealth, of simply being treated as a human being. It's the one thing Walter will never be. But what if he could play white the way so many others seem to do? Would it bring him privilege or simply deny the pain? The title story in this collection asks those questions and then moves on to challenge notions of race, privilege, personal choice and even life and death with equal vigour. From the spectrum spanning despair and hope um, to the stark weave of personal struggles, Let's Play White speaks with the voices of the overlooked and unheard. So this one deals specifically with, with race issues. Again, um, I, a short story collection, so immediately intrigues me. I love, I just love horror short stories. I write them all the time love reading them. Next we have We Cast a Shadow which is by Maurice Carlos Ruffin. How far would you go to protect your child? Extremely. Our narrator faces an impossible decision. Like any father he just wants the best for his son Nigel, a biracial boy whose black birthmark is growing larger by the day. In this near future society plagued by resurgent racism, segregation and expanding private prisons, sound familiar? Our narrator knows Nigel might not survive. Having watched the world take away his own father, he's determined to stop history from repeating itself. There's one potential solution, a new experimental medical procedure that promises to save lives by turning people white. But in order to afford Nigel's whiteness operation, our narrator must make partner as one of the few black associates at his law firm, jumping through a series of increasingly surreal hoops, from diversity committees to plantation tours to quality activist groups in an urgent quest to protect his son. This electrifying suspenseful novel is at once a razor sharp satire of surviving racism in America and a profoundly moving family story. Um, that one has kind of like get out vibes for me. Um, I, I definitely re like immediately even just reading that it's like an uncomfortable read that concept. Um, so it's it's going for the graft straight away. So I'm really intrigued to read that one. And then finally we have Who Fears Death by Nettie Okrafor. Um, which is actually been optioned by um, I think it's HBO to become a TV show which is being produced by George R. R. Martin so um, I definitely want to read it before that comes out because I always like to read the text before I see the adaptations in a post-apocalyptic Africa the world has changed in many ways yet in one region genocide between tribes still bodies the land a woman who has survived the annihilation of her village and a terrible rape by an enemy general wanders into the desert hoping to die instead she gives birth to an angry baby girl with hair and skin the colour of sand Gripped by the certainty that her daughter is different, special, she names her, oh I'm so terrible at pronouncing names, but I'm so sorry, Onyesinwu, which means who fears death in an ancient language. It doesn't take long for Onye to discover that she is physically and socially marked by the circumstances of her conception. She is a real child of rape who is expected to live a life of violence, a half-breed rejected by her community. But Onye is not the average Iwu. Her, even as a child, she manifests the beginnings of a remarkable and unique magic as she grows. So do her abilities, and during an inadvertent visit to the spirit realm, she learns something terrifying. Someone powerful is trying to kill her. Desperate to elude her word be murderer and to understand her own nature, she embarks on a journey in which she grapples with nature, tradition, history, tree love, and the spiritual mysteries of her culture. Ultimately learns why she was given the name she bears, who fears death. Um, again, straight away you see that that's going to have some really uncomfortable moments in it. You've got rape. Um, and sexual violence, um, genocide, but it's important to have these types of discussions even if it is just in a, a, fant a dark fantasy slash horror sort of context. Um, but And it sounds like um, one, hell of, one hell of a book to be honest. So um, again, I'm, I'm eventually going to buy all of these hopefully and read them all. I've ordered a few so far. Um, so yeah guys, that's, that's the list I came up with. If you have any books or authors that you would like to re recommend, please put them down below. Um, it doesn't have to be horror, that's just, I've, I've made mine primarily horror because that's what my channel is mostly about and that's what I personally read and what I'm interested in. Um, I did sort of scan my bookshelves and realise that there isn't the hugest amount of diversity there and I wanted to change that. I wanted to support black authors um, and I wanted to try to help with what's going on in the, in the small way that I could um, by supporting those authors and getting the word of them out there, getting their books out there and buying some myself for reading and review. Um, so if you guys could do the same, that would be great. Um, I think that um, looking into it and researching, they are, black people are very underrepresented in horror. Um, so it's important to try to change that because at the end of the day, um, people from different cultural backgrounds, different histories, different experiences 
they're going to be able to create books that you just can't because you don't have that perspective, you don't have that history, you don't have that culture. And when it comes to horror, I can't wait to see how that manifests. Um, it's a you know, perfect example of it is the book to do with voodoo, the book to do with African tribes and genocide. These are perspectives that we don't have as a white Western European, something that I can't um, possibly understand. But this book will give me an insight into that world and will be able to take me on a journey that I never would have been able to do before. So it's so important to get those diverse voices out there for that exact reason, because it means that we get to read about so many more things and experience so many more things that we would never have, have been able to even imagine and um, to get into that headspace to have a bit of perspective on those things so I think it's just it's wonderful to have that um, diversity in all aspects of writing but in horror in particular I'm very excited to see it um, put to that particular genre and um, the, the darkness and the intensity that that will bring so that's it guys as I said recommendations down below let's get this going let's all try to support the um, black writers out there and uh, if you want any more information about anything I've said today I'm going to put some links down below as well for um, some articles and things that will help you look into things that you can donate and um, petitions to sign that kind of thing and I'll put the link to that YouTube video as well that's been monetized that kind of thing just to try to um, get the word out there as best I can and that's me for now I hope that um, this shows a turn for the better for things and I'm um, just sending love to everybody out there, all the way from Northern Ireland.